Warren, thank you very much for doing this. Well, thanks for inviting me. We have a lot to cover. Let's start with the election. A hard-fought election on both sides, no question. What do you think this election has done to America? Well, we will find out the answer to that. I mean, it clearly was an election like none other I've ever seen. I voted in my first election in 1952. Dwight Eisenhower, Adlai Stevenson. No one went in and voted for Dwight Eisenhower because they didn't like Stevenson. No one went in and voted for Stevenson because they hated Eisenhower. I mean, every vote almost was an affirmative vote. And I'm sure we set a record for what you might call negative votes this time. I mean, people went in and voted against the other person. And that's a huge, I mean, that, that, that has real repercussions. Uh, and the trend has been in that direction over the years. But we are having, and this was the culmination of it, but we are having elections more and more, partly because what money can do with negative ads and all of that sort of thing. I don't remember negative ads from 1952. They both ran a lot of those. Oh, uh, sure. And, and the, the reason they run them is that it's been proven that they work. And, and money has way, is way more of a factor, obviously, in politics now. But, but it's, it's different when 130 million people go to the polls, with many of them voting for Trump because they didn't like Hillary and many voting for Hillary because they didn't like Trump. You are a huge supporter of Hillary Clinton. True. You were one of the first big names to endorse her. Do you support Donald Trump as the next president? Oh, sure. I support any president of the United States. I mean, it's, it's very important that the American people coalesce behind the president. That doesn't mean they can't criticize him or they can't disagree with his, what he's doing, maybe. But, but we need a country unified mm -hmm. uh, by a president, the legitimacy of the president. And, and uh, uh, he deserves everybody's respect. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's, it's really... We proved with Bush v. Gore, I mean, the whole country went back to work. <laughs> the Supreme Court decided, I, mean, I, 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 think, I think there were unusual strains within the, within the population in this because there was so much negative campaigning. And, 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 and the candidates sunk to a lower level in terms of the debates and all of that, that uh, than we would have had 40 years ago when mm -hmm. the famous Kennedy-Nixon debate that started things off. Uh, it, it wasn't intensely personal. It, you know, you didn't uh, hear, hear the kind of things we heard this time. Uh, but we, you, you've got to be behind the president. As a huge supporter of Hillary Clinton, what was your hope that she could do for this country? Well, Why did you want to see her as the 45th president so much? The two most important things in my mind, by far the most important thing, is what what person is likely as president to minimize the chances of weapons of mass destruction being used? I mean, that is the, America has a wonderful future. The world has a wonderful future. We do have weaponry out there that nobody could have dreamt of uh, 80 years ago. The world changed in 1945. And so individuals, groups, even rogue nations are going to be with us forever mm -hmm. who would like to kill millions of Americans. You can't stop the random acts. I mean, it, you should not hold a president responsible for whether some lone wolf goes out and kills 50 people. It's terrible, but he can't do anything about that. It does make a difference in terms of whether, when you get a Cuban Missile Crisis or something so like that. So it's temperament. It's temperament and judgment. And yeah, it's temperament and judgment. And that, that is the most important job in my mind that the President of the United States has. Other things are going to fall into place, sure. but one mistake there. So, Do and, Donald Trump is the president-elect. No, no, you voted, have questions, uh, it sounds like, about his temperament. Well, uh, you had to choose between two people, and I chose Hillary on that. And that's, and, but that was the number one okay. in my mind. The second thing in, in my mind is that we've got an unbelievably prosperous country, and loads of people are not participating in that who are perfectly decent citizens who should. So I think, and we will have an ever more prosperous country. I would hope that 10 and 20 years and 30 years from now, uh, a much higher percentage of the people who are willing to work can find a 40 hour a week sufficient. They don't have to have a second job or anything of the sort. We can afford that. And uh, in that respect, I agreed with her. I agreed with Bernie Sanders on that as far as that's concerned.
to the temperament issue and you, you bring up nuclear weapons, do you now trust that Donald Trump has the temperament needed as the leader of the free world to be the one who has those codes? It's important that he does and, and nobody knows for sure what does happen uh, if you get a call in the middle of the night. You're hopeful? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm always hopeful, <laughs> but there will, you know, North Korea is still there. I mean, there are rogue organizations that in terms of cyber, nuclear, chemical, biological, uh, they would use those uh, uh, weapons uh, in, on a huge scale uh, if they could get materials, deliverability and all of that. And you need a president who feels that's his number one job. You've called this election one of the greatest protest votes of all time. Donald Trump tweeted after he won, the forgotten man and woman will never be forgotten again. He had a message and a movement, a wave, that resonated with much of this country, much of where we're sitting in Nebraska. And I wonder why you think he was able to speak so effectively to men and women who feel left behind by this economy, that the growth we've seen is not inclusive enough for them, and what America can learn from this. Well, they had a choice of two candidates, and. I think it's, it's indicated, uh, the vote indicates that uh, much of the American public didn't like either candidate very well. I mean, and, and uh, uh, they could easily feel that they'd seen Hillary for a long time and very hard to change your mind about somebody that, or get new hope about somebody that you've already formed a, perhaps a negative opinion on. And, uh, uh, but in the end, who knows what they thought of that. We're going we're to do a lot of studies on that, but we don't but know the answer to that it's yet. It's interesting when you do look at, at the, the exit polling and take it for what it's worth, because the polling models on the front end of this were, were off. But uh, Hillary Clinton won lower income Americans, uh, $50,000 incomes and below, and Donald Trump won you know, middle class and wealthier Americans. Um, what is the Trump movement then? Well, if it's not necessarily about income inequality, what is it? Well, Trump but won the 50,000 under white, and particularly white male vote, big time. So uh, that 50,000 under has a disproportionate number of minorities that, mm -hmm. that uh, went for Hillary. So you have to mm -hmm. segment that further. But uh, people felt, well, I'll give you a figure. I mean, the Forbes, Forbes 400 had $93 billion in 1982, and they got $2.4 trillion now. And that's 25 times as much. You know, if, if you've been working 40 hours a week, maybe holding a second job, and you, know, you work with the Little League, and you've been a good parent, and you're really struggling, you think, what's wrong with this picture? Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to change the picture, and apparently more went in to the, uh, into the voting booth than, than uh, and decided that uh, Trump was the answer. But I, I, it's interesting, you mentioned the exit polls. I had exit polls from one of the best news organizations around at 7 p.m. Eastern on election night, state by state, and they were off by six or seven points. Mm -hmm. I heard traveling across this country, not much, but I did hear from some that they didn't believe that America was ready to elect a woman. Do you believe that Hillary Clinton lost in part because she is a woman? Sure, she lost some votes because of that. She probably got some votes because of that. It's very, I don't know the balance of the two. But there's no question that uh, there would be a lot of votes against her because she was a woman. Not like it would have been 30 or 40 years ago, but there, there would still be a lot of votes. There would be a lot of votes for because she was a woman. And, how the balance came out, I, I don't know. And people wouldn't necessarily give you an honest answer on that if you were polling them. You are the eternal optimist. I mean, you're the one who wrote the opinion piece in the middle of the Great Recession saying bet on America. Absolutely. Do you feel optimistic about America right now? A, a divided America? A hundred percent. Why? It is the, I mean, this, this is a fantastic country. In my lifetime, I was born in 1930. The real GDP per person has gone up six for one. Here we were just about the most advanced country in the world when I was born, and one person's lifetime, six for one. There's never been anything like it. We have $57,000 of GDP per capita. Family of four, 228,000. They don't get it, but, but it, this system will produce more and more stuff, 
and better and better stuff and services. The system works regardless the, of who the, the market the system is. works. All right, let's. But talk. it doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't. Clearly. It works in aggregate. Let's talk about the markets long term. Uh, the market reaction to to all of this to President Elect Trump. What do you expect it to be long term, given the policy proposals that he's laid out? If he carries through with them. Are you talking about the stock market? I'm talking about the stock market. Yeah, stock market will, will be and higher 10, 20, 30 in years from now. Uh, and it would have been with Hillary and it would have been and will be with Trump. So all of these predictions that the market was going to tank under they're, President they're Trump? Si they're silly. Silly. They're silly. Let's dig into some of the proposals that Donald Trump has put out there, the economic proposals mm -hmm. and your take on them. Uh, he has suggested and proposed instituting a 35 percent tariff on goods imported from Mexico and China yeah. to this country. Uh, a lot of business leaders say that would cause a trade war, that would cause a recession. What do you say? Well, I think it's a bad idea, a very bad idea, but I'm not going to say it'll cause a, a recession. Uh, anytime you start playing around with retaliatory type trade things, it's very, very likely you're going to have a, the other side's going to play too. I mean, that's been, been the history. Uh, the problem for trade, and this is why you need what I would call an instructor in chief as, as president, because uh, you cannot blame anybody that lost their job because uh, industry, their industry moved abroad because there was a comparative advantage with some other country. You can't expect any of them to, to say, ah, I'm, what, I'm for free trade because it, it helps the society as a whole. It does help the society as a whole, but the benefits are very diffuse. You know, I may buy the socks I have, <laughs> the underwear I have, a few cents cheaper because of the comparative advantage of some other country in producing it. But I don't get down every, every time I go to Walmart and buy them, I don't say, oh, thank God for free trade. Does it worry you then to hear Donald Trump say he will scrap NAFTA, which he'll have the power to do as president? Well, we'll see what happens. I, uh, it is true there will be, a, that with the Republicans in control of the Senate and the House. You, you don't will. think he'll do it? Well, I, I, you know, he has, to, he has to get the House and Senate. <laughs> he has to get support on it. There will be a lot of, and this is not true, this is not exclusive to Donald Trump. There are a lot of things said in campaigns that don't happen uh, after the election. Donald Trump ran on the platform of being a billionaire businessman, arguing that that gives him the unique ability to help all of the Americans, the millions of people who are struggling in this country, who cannot get by on one job, who cannot support their family, and they believe he is their answer. Do you think that Donald Trump is a good businessman? Because you certainly went after him on his business record during the campaign. Yeah, well, he, he, had, he had some major failures, and, and he was very good at licensing, and he was very good at, at things that involved promotion of his name. Uh, actual operation of the businesses in the 1980s and 1990s, you know, it left him essentially uh, bankrupting you know, multiple companies. But he, I would say he understands business, uh, but his record has been better at licensing and, and uh, than than operation. putting out his own capital. Yeah. His publicly traded Trump casino empire business, no major U.S. company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy more. Are you concerned about his ability to operate big businesses? Well, he isn't going to be operating a business. We operate. I don't have to worry about him running a business at all. <laughs> He's the one that has to, uh, you know, that, that's, that, that doesn't really, in my judgment, uh, determine whether somebody makes a great president. Mm -hmm. Harry Truman went broke in a haberdashery store you know, <laughs> near Kansas City or in Kansas City. I mean, he wasn't much of a businessman. He turned out to be a terrific president. Looking at some of the proposals that Donald Trump has, has put out there, um, because you said earlier, you said that this country will be fine even if we elect, quote, the wrong president. This was months ago. So he says, cut taxes for the wealthy, scrap trade deals like NAFTA, deport millions of immigrants, build a wall between the United States and Mexico. And in doing so, he believes that he can deliver 4% growth a year, at least and create 25 million jobs over 10 years. Yeah, you know business like no other. Mm. Are those things possible with these proposals? Well, I don't think anybody can grow our economy in real terms at 4% a year over time. I mean, I, there may be a given year when that happens, but the math of it is just too extraordinary. Mm. If you simply grow our economy 2% a year, which we've been doing, you will have $19,000 more of real GDP per capita in one generation. 
I mean, we are the result of compound interest on growth, but it, had, it isn't 4%. Uh, yeah, that 4% is not, uh, uh, there'll be given years like that, but it's not realistic. So those numbers aren't realistic. Well, no, but people promise things in campaigns that aren't realistic. The, the, the thing is, though, so many Americans depend on this. I mean, Well, they, they don't have to depend on 4% growth. They have to depend on better distribution of 2% growth. But those are the numbers he's betting on. Well, you don't know. Neutral, you know I mean, during example. a camp, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. You aren't going to see the, you know, it, 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 it was what uh, uh, Mario Cuomo said, you know, you, 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 you uh, campaign in poetry and you're governed in prose. <laughs> there is a great likelihood that Donald Trump will have to deal with a recession on his hands. This has been a long bull market run. Whoever the next president was will likely have to deal with a recession of some magnitude. Um, you often picked up the telephone when President Obama called you for your advice. If a President Trump calls you to come to the White House to help him, to advise him on economic policy, would you do that? I would do that with any president. I've never called a president in my life, uh, so I don't, I don't initiate him. But, but if any president asks me for help in any way, I mean, that's, that's part of being a citizen. Does President Donald Trump uh, and the proposals he's laid out change any way that you do business or what you invest in? That's really interesting you ask that because we were buying and selling certain stocks a week ago, and I thought Hillary would be like, like we're buying and selling the same stocks today, and, really? we, and we did it. The, we did it on when, yeah, we did it on Wednesday the day after, and now we're buying them in the same quantities. We're selling them in the same quantity. We we haven't changed anything. <laughs> you have been paying taxes since you were seven years old. No, no, I, no. Since I was since I was thirteen. Since you were paying yeah, I was a late, when I was you a late starter. When you were thirteen, <laughs> I've right. got every return too. <laughs> Let's talk about Donald Trump's taxes. You publicly challenged him during the campaign to release his tax sure. returns. You said you would do the same thing, and then journalists and public could ask you guys endless questions about them. That did not happen yet. I don't know if we will ever see Donald Trump's tax returns. I don't returns. think you will. You don't think we will? No. You've said you will learn a whole lot more about Donald Trump if he produces his income tax returns. What do you think the American people would learn? Well, you'd, you'd, you'd learn a lot of details about, you know, what his income was, what his charities were, how much they were, what, what deductions he took, whether he had tax shelters or not, you know, what kind of securities he bought and sold. I mean, you'd learn a lot. You'd learn a lot about me looking at my returns. It wouldn't be that interesting, but you, you would learn. What do you make of the fact that he so far refuses to release them? He doesn't want to. Why? <laughs> well, because he thought it would hurt him in the election. Does it bother you? Well, it's something... You know, I think they should do just like medical records uh, candidates, but but you've got to expect that, I mean, Hillary didn't want to release, you know, the transcripts of the talks. Should it, she have? Know. Should she have? Well, it, it's, it's The very, Wall Street speeches? Yeah, well, obviously, I, I never run a political campaign, but obviously in the political campaign, you decide what hurts you and what helps you. And believe me, that's the calculation, you know, and, and you've got to expect candidates to behave in that way. You don't advance to the point where you're running for president of the United States without learning something about political campaigns and having people around you that give you all kinds of advice. And that, that was the, obviously, either their own determinations with both candidates or the urgings of those around them. And Have you spoken with Hillary Clinton since she conceded? No. 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 President Obama has 70 days or so left in office. Um, Grade President Obama for us. You know him well. How has he done? Oh, I think he's done very well. I mean, he came in, you know, in, in January of 2009, and there were questions. As, I mean, the, kind of, the stock market hit bottom in March of 2009. The economy hit bottom in the third quarter. But, I mean, he inherited a terrible, terrible, terrible hand. I mean, it was close to what Roosevelt inherited. And, and, uh, uh, he had to do things fast, and he had to get a Congress to go along with him, and, and, uh, and he had to educate the American people, and people were shell-shocked at, at that time. Uh, so I think considering the hand he had, considering later the problems of a divided uh, Congress, uh, I, I, think, oh, I think he's done a terrific job. I have not been disappointed in him at all. So what grade would you give him? Oh, I give him a very high grade. I'm not, <laughs> I don't want to try to get it to the decibel points, but I give him a high grade. Before we move on, what do you think his legacy will be? What will we be talking about 20 years from now? Well, we're certainly going to talk about the fact that he was the first African-American president. I mean, that is, that is very historic uh, in itself. Uh, but I think we will talk about a president that we 
where our economic machine came off the tracks like it hadn't since the 1930s, who, who put it back on the tracks and got it going mm -hmm. very well. And I think that that's huge. Now, I think there are other people who deserve a lot of credit mm -hmm. in that respect, uh, uh, but, I, but he's the leader. You've lived through a lot. You've seen a lot of elections. This is a divided nation as we sit here today. Is this a nation that will come together and heal? Absolutely, absolutely. I grew up in a household when I was eight or nine years old. You know, my sisters and I did not get dessert until we said something bad about Roosevelt. And so I, I heard my dad and his friends say, you know, there'd never be an election after the third term, that, uh, you know, uh, that the system was falling apart. I, throughout my life, the people who will come up on the short end of an, an election say it's the end of the world, <laughs> you know, and all of that. America's, America's stronger than that. America has a wonderful future. The world has a wonderful future. We do have weaponry out there that nobody could have dreamt of uh, 80 years ago. The world changed in 1945. And so individuals, groups, even rogue nations are going to be with us forever mm -hmm. who would like to kill millions of Americans. You can't stop the random acts. I mean, it, you should not hold the president responsible for whether some lone wolf goes out and kills 50 people. It's terrible, but he can't do anything about that. It does make a difference in terms of whether, when you get a Cuban Missile Crisis or something so like that. So it's temperament. It's temperament and judgment. And yeah, it's temperament and judgment. And that, that is the most important job in my mind that the President of the United States has. Other things are gonna fall into play. Here we set a record for what you might call negative votes this time. I mean, people went in and voted against the other person. And that's a huge, I mean, that, that, that has real repercussions. Uh, and the trend has been in that direction over the years, but we are having, and this was the culmination of it, but we are having elections more and more, partly because what money can do with negative ads and all of that sort of thing. I don't remember negative ads from 1952. They both ran a lot of those. Oh, uh, sure, and, and the, the reason they run them is that it's been proven that they work, and, and money has way, is way more of a factor, obviously, in politics now, but, but it's, it's different when 130 million people go to the polls with many of them voting for Trump because they didn't like Hillary and many voting for Hillary because they didn't like Trump. You are a huge supporter. And the candidates sunk to a lower level in terms of the debates and all of that, that uh, than we would have had 40 years ago. When mm -hmm. the famous Kennedy-Nixon debate that started things off, uh, it, it wasn't intensely personal. It, you know, you didn't uh, hear, hear the kind of things we heard this time. Uh, but we, you, you've got to be behind the president. As a huge supporter of Hillary Clinton, what was your hope that she could do for this country? Well, Why did you want to see her as the 45th president so much? The two most important things in my mind, by far the most important thing, is what, what person is likely as president to minimize the chances of weapons of mass destruction being used. I mean, that is the... Thank you very much for doing this. Well, thanks for inviting me. It. We have a lot to cover. Let's start with the election. A hard-fought election on both sides, no question. What do you think this election has done to America? Well, we will find out the answer to that. I mean, it clearly was an election like none other I've ever seen. I voted in my first election in 1952. Dwight Eisenhower, Adlai Stevenson. No one went in and voted for Dwight Eisenhower because they didn't like Stevenson. No one went in and voted for Stevenson because they hated Eisenhower. I mean, every vote almost was an affirmative vote. And I'm sure- Of Hillary Clinton. True. You were one of the first big names to endorse her. Do you support Donald Trump as the next president? Oh, sure, I support any president of the United States. I mean, it's, it's very important that the American people coalesce behind the president. That doesn't mean they can't criticize him or they can't disagree with his, what he's doing maybe, but but we need a country unified mm -hmm. uh, by a president, the legitimacy of the president, and, and uh, uh, he deserves everybody's respect. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's, it's really, we proved with Bush 
big or I mean the whole country went back to work <laughs> the Supreme Court decided uh, I, th I, th I think I think there were unusual strains within the within the population in this because there was so much negative campaigning and and, and